Hi guys, it's Sterling Spectre here. In today's video, I'll be discussing the pros and cons of both solo mining and pool mining. Then I'll go over which method of mining I think is the best. So pool mining is where a group of miners all put their hash rates towards finding a block on a network. In theory, when you pool hash rates from many different miners, you create a massive computer that gets rewarded in blocks. Once these blocks are found on the network, the profit is split between the different miners depending on the amount of work they put towards the block. For example, say a person puts 5% of their hash rate to mine a block, they'll receive 5% of the block reward. However, solo mining is different. This is where you mine in your own hopes that you'll find a block on the network. If you find a block, then you get to keep 100% of the rewards from the block. Now, finding a block solo mining will depend on how much luck you have, but we'll go in depth on that a little later. Firstly, I want to go over the pros and cons of pool mining. So, pool mining's biggest advantage is that you get a constant stream of income. No matter how much blocks have been found, you always get a slice of the pie when a block is found. As mining pools have a lot of hash rate, they are pretty much guaranteed to find blocks on the network. Therefore, income is guaranteed. Now, this income amount depends on how much work you personally put into the block, but also depends on the network difficulty. If the network difficulty becomes higher, then you get less profit from the amount of work you put in. Network difficulty is driven by the amount of hash rate on the network. So if more people are mining a coin, then the difficulty becomes higher. This is why pool mining is great for small miners as they can get paid even with a little amount of hash rate. Now mining pools are also good because the fees for these pools tend to be very low at around 1%. So you do lose 1% of your earnings but this is because a third party is basically doing all the transactions to your wallet and splitting the earnings for you. Lastly, pool mining allows for mining of any coin. As Ethereum requires a massive amount of hash rate to mine solo, pools have helped people mine this coin without having to spend loads to buy more GPUs just to be able to solo mine. Now there are disadvantages to mining pools. The main one is that you might be missing out on earning more money. As in pool mining, you get paid by the amount of shares that are submitted to the pool. Now shares are basically like very small blocks. You mine for shares and then the amount of shares you have submitted to the pool will be how much money you earn. This system of pay per share can give out lower payouts than solo mining. The next disadvantage is that you have to trust the pool owner not to rip you off. Two miners caught some backlash for this a while ago when they were collecting the MEV from the Ethereum blocks and not paying it out to the miners which meant that many people lost a large amount of money depending on how long they had been mining. Most mining pools nowadays are very transparent with their users, so this tends not to happen so often. I'm going to move on to the main advantages and disadvantages of solo mining. So let's start off by explaining how solo mining works. Solo mining comes down to two things. These are hash rate and luck. Everyone knows how hash rate works, but luck is something that confuses a lot of people when they're looking to solo mine. Luck is measured in a percentage, and this is calculated by how much blocks you find in relation to how long you mine for. So for each coin, there will be an amount of time for your personal hash rate that you should mine before your miner finds a block. For example, say you're mining Ethereum with a 2 giga hash rig. After a certain amount of time, you'll discover a block. Let's say that you mined for one day and found one block. Normally, the amount of time to find a block is two days. This means that in theory you got lucky by finding a block in less amount of time needed. This would put your luck at 50% because you found a block in half the time that you're supposed to find a block. As mentioned before, luck is a percentage. This percentage number represents the amount of work you put into the block. If your personal luck is 100%, that means you put 100% of the work to find the block. If your luck is 50%, then you only put 50% of the work to find a block. If your luck is 200%, then you put in double the amount of work to find this block. Therefore, anything under 100% is good, and anything over 100% is bad. So now I've explained how luck works. This is one of the main advantages and disadvantages of solo mining. As when mining, you could mine for a week and find 10 blocks, which would be great, or you could mine for a week and only find 2 blocks, which wouldn't be very good. Luck doesn't conform to any algorithm, so it's very unpredictable, and nobody can say for definite that you'll find a block if you solo mine. This is the main problem that it doesn't guarantee a steady flow of income every day. However, the main reason for solo mining 
is that you keep all the rewards from the block you mine. This means you don't have to pay any fees such as the ones that come along when pool mining. One other thing that determines solo block mining is your ping to the server. If you have a lower ping to the server, the blockchain tends to give out blocks to you more often. From my own personal experience, solo mining does bring in slightly more profit than pool mining. But this is my experience when using a large amount of hashing power. So here lies the problem that to solo mine you need a large amount of hashing power. Otherwise it takes ages to find a block on the network. When I started mining, I'd choose whether to solo mine based on how much blocks I could roughly find in a week. To estimate how many blocks you could find, I used a website called 2cryptocal.com just to give me a general figure of how many blocks I could find within the week. If we head over to that website and click on any of these coins, it'll take us to the coins page. At the top, you can enter the amount of hash rate that you have currently. Then if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it'll tell you how much blocks you're likely to find. As you can see, it says here, we can find three blocks in a week, which in my opinion is fine. As a rule of thumb, if you can mine a block every week, then I would say you should go for solo mining instead of pool mining. So this is one of the disadvantages of solo mining. You have to buy a lot of GPUs to have a large hashing power. In the case of Ethereum, it takes around 15,000 mega hash to find a block every week. That's a lot of hashing power and will cost around 100k to buy in this market. So that's the disadvantages of both pool mining and solo mining. I'm going to show you my personal earnings from solo mining and pool mining and compare them for you. So let's head over to my spreadsheet where I've recorded the payments for a month of solo mining and a month of pool mining. So I had two miners set up, both consisting of the same graphics cards. They both had around 300 souls of hashing power each. It wasn't exactly 300 souls, but it was close enough the same as each other. Souls per second is just the same as hash rate, but it's called different things on different algorithms. I had these mining back in December, so the figures and difficulty might be different to the network now. As you can see, in a 30 day period, we found six blocks solo mining, which gave us a net income of $735. Now, if we look at the pool mining, we can see that we had payments of around six to seven flux every day, and we ended up with a net income of $650. Once I did this experiment, I realized I was losing out on a lot of money by pool mining. It would make sense to me that I should switch to solo mining because I have a large amount of hash rate. So to conclude this video, my advice would be, if you're a smaller miner with a little amount of hash rate, then just stick to pool mining. But if you have a considerable, if you have a considerable amount of hash rate, then I'd definitely look into solo mining, as it can increase profits over a certain amount of time. I hope this video has helped you guys decide whether to solo mine or pool mine. If it has helped, please leave a like on the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and subscribe for more content like this.